uh, an uh, invited speaker, Mr. Sharul Nizam bin Zaino, who is the head of professional development services from the Department of uh, I mean Department of Federation of Investment Managers Malaysia FIMM. And uh, my name is Nirma. Uh, I'm from Malaysian Financial Planning Council, and I will be presenting on uh, career as a financial planner and also. Uh, some of the, I mean, and also regarding MFPC, Malaysian Financial Planning Council. So we will just wait another one, two minutes just for all of you all to enter and then we will be starting the session. So uh, before we start the session, just like to, uh, I mean, I mean, just like to let you know regarding a few reminders, please uh, turn off your mic and also, uh, if possible, your video because uh, if, uh, I mean, if I mean, if there's too much of a video ban, maybe the our session can be a little bit of a. I mean, our session can be interrupted. So just need your favor to actually turn off your audio, especially even your video is okay, no problem. But your audio, so that uh, in case if anything happens at home, a sound or what, it doesn't uh, interrupt the program. Thank you so much. Okay, there. Hi there. I can see twenty-one of you all have already joined for today's session, and the time now is already ten four. So let's start today's session. So for today's starting session, I will be actually sharing. Uh, our MFPC corporate video. Uh, so just uh, sit down and uh, have a look at our uh, um, corporate video. One second. Okay, video. Yep, I think it will be being playing in uh, in a moment. Okay, before that, let me share a little bit about uh, today's webinar first. Um, okay, so this is our webinar from today. I mean, for today, ten to ten thirty, we will be having introduction of MFPC, and then followed by ten thirty to eleven, career as a financial planner talk, and followed by eleven to twelve will be unique trust and private retirement scheme in the long term so we will move on with the first okay first of all we will move on with mfpc workshop and talk so every program hours we have a objective for it mfpc part so let me share the objective of this part uh, uh, this workshop our workshop in purpose is actually intense awareness on financial planning among graduates like y'all so and then all enhance financial planning literacy among the undergraduates is more the terms of financial planning concept and practices and for to uh, for encourage self-discipline and personal management number five provide form information exchange making inquiries and number six is to promote financial planning uh, as a career so the mfpc roles Let me see if video is ready to play.
okay it looks like the video has some time to pop out so then let uh play session first oh okay so oh i mean can all of you all look at the slides uh it's written there as financial planning profession okay uh below your uh bar there is I mean, there is a portion where you can actually write down your questions. Any question you'd like to ask MMC and so FIMM for today's talk, and we will definitely reply you as soon as possible during the session. And the session. So let's start with the first question for today. So hi, my name is Nirmal. I'm from the Education and Training Department from MFPC, Malaysian Planning Council. So the gist of financial planning. Uh, who is a financial planner? So, uh, all will have had doubt. Okay, everyone is talking about financial planner. Who is this financial planner? Okay, uh, before I would like to move on to this slide, can you all just start on your idea on who is a financial planner? Have a look of your idea. Comment in the chat box below. And I will be sharing some of your answers here. So, there is no right or wrong don't be shy just write down uh who do you think is a financial planner and what do they do as for a profession as we doctor what they do they actually treat patients a lawyer actually uh, uh fights or he uh, advocates their plan so everyone has their own uh work scope right so i just want to know as a finance student what do you think and who do you think is a financial planner you can comment on the chat box Okay, Shakira Rahman has said, certified person who manages individual wealth. Awesome, Shakira. Awesome. Okay, uh, any other answers? And the most interesting part for today's session, I will be actually taking some of your name and actually passing you an MFPC T-shirt. So, T-shirt is not with me, but the MFPC T-shirt is like black color T-shirt written MFPC. So, I taking down your names for today's session and I will be getting in touch with you and I'll be sending you that team. So keep your answers coming in. So um, Mutara Lukman said that a financial planner is a person who actually professionally help and their client finances. Awesome, my Sarah. Thank you so much. Any else? And uh, we have executive director, MFPC, uh, Ms. Chung Kain. She also had on her answers. She, she said, uh, a financial plan is someone who helps us to achieve our financial goals. So as I said, there is no right or wrong answers. But again, I see all the answers which have come in from uh, from Shakira right up to Maisara is correct. Where financial planner is actually a professional who actually help plan a client's finances. So awesome for all those who have uh, put in your answers uh, uh, previously, which is uh, Shakira and Maisara. Congrats! I'll be sending you an MFPT T-shirt. Okay, so after the session, please, uh, uh, please uh, actually uh, contact. Please uh, let me know regarding your details or no. I have your name. Check it list. So no worries. After the session, you can actually drop me a message regarding uh, details, and I will get back. So let's move on with today's session. So a financial planner, according to the slides, will be and according to PC, a financial planner is a qualified financial professional. Who helps individual and corporation to meet their short-term and also their long-term financial objectives by analyzing the client status and setting up a, a program to help the client meet those goals. So that's what uh, a financial planner. So. Next slide is um, who is a financial planner? Again, uh, a financial planner is actually a work which actually uh, finds profit 
capitalism and entrepreneurship together. So financial planning is actually a professional work which requires high level of social skills and also technical knowledge. And when you and then also when you engage a professional service, it's with a professional fee. So this is how actually financial planning is paid, which is they will actually be paid based on the fee which has been uh, given to them. So, and then the best part about this career is that you work as an entrepreneur, not an employee. I know many students, not only in UIA, but also UIM and many other UM, a lot of students, what they feel is, okay, after I finish, I want to go and work in a company first, around of experience, and then I want to start my own, uh, own financial firm or I want to do my own business, or I want to start my own accountancy company, or start up, if you ask a lawyer, I want to start up my own law firm. So this, I mean, the most uh, interesting part about this financial planner experience is that you get to work as an entrepreneur. So you get to work for yourself and for others. And, and when you help them, that is the biggest satisfaction which you'll ever get when you help to solve clients, uh, financial uh, issues. So a financial planner is not like a normal profession, you know, it's actually a person who actually holds a license, the capital market service license, the SC Security Commission, and also they will hold the Bank Negara Malay license, uh, the FA license. And not only that, you see a financial planner actually works on many, uh, many, uh, uh, I mean, many categories such as cash flow uh, planning, credit management, risk management, protecting planning, investment planning, retirement planning, education planning, estate planning, and also banking solution. Yeah. One second, yeah. Okay, I would really hope that you can actually mute down your volume so that you can hear the session clearly. So, uh, what do actually? Uh, so, what do actually uh, financial planner do? They step. Uh, they actually establish a relationship with clients. Now, two, they gather all clients' data, including gold. Number three, analyze and evaluate clients' financial status. Number four, develop and prepare the financial planning recommendation. Number five, implement financial plan. And number six, monitor financial and re evaluate as necessary. So, it's nothing to be complicated. I this, this is a very simple uh, pie chart here. Very, very simple. So, what's happening is that uh, this particular uh, pie chart is actually letting know that a financial planner is someone who actually, first of all, establish a relationship with a client. So, once you already establish a relationship with a client, you want to study that client's uh, financial uh, status. So you have to what you have to gather the clients that, and then you'll need to analyze, you need to find how much debt, how much of assets he has, how much of liabilities he, he has, how many uh how many ex nothing to be uh sorry, how many wife he has, how many uh, I mean how many family members he has, how many children he has, how, uh parents wise, are they still alive? So if they are alive, how much client is giving to their parents, how much client is supporting their children, and how much client is setting aside for each of their family members. So all this is part of the uh, data collection. Number three, upon getting all the data, you have to analyze. As a financial planner, the most important skill is analyzing skills. You must have that particular skills to analyze and to actually come up and say that, okay, this would be the this would be the ideal way how we can actually reduce your debts and also increase your assets and also increase your uh, money. Because as we know, this world, everything that we touch, even from a laptop, a mouse, or even the food that we buy from a shop, everything requires money. So savings is very important. So you can also advise your clients to improve on their savings. And number four comes to the most important part. As a financial planner, you will be developing a, con a financial plan. It's in 
in MFPC and many other financial fields, we actually call, uh, call it construction of financial plan. So you will be constructing a very beautiful financial plan. Imagine being a person who actually solves a person's problem. If you are a person who likes to solve people's problem, you know, people very, I mean, it's very normal. People always come come to us with problem they say hey uh actually i have a problem with that i have a problem so if you are a problem solver you will be loving this career and you will also have to have a critical thinking hey how come uh, my client is actually paying this much but then it's actually uh only this much so if you are a person you'll be enjoying <laughs> importantly is to implement a financial plan and number six the most important also you must always monitor and re-evaluate not always the first construction of financial plan which you put will be always be uh always be usable in the next one or two years things will change in your client's family maybe your client will have a new baby baby boy baby girl so when there is a new baby boy baby girl so there must be a planning for that so as such uh planning i mean if your client's planning is very important to have this particular six uh, pie chart. So, uh, who is, uh, who is, I mean, this financial planning, right? There is two types of a fi uh, financial planner. One is a tight financial advisor and one more is an independent financial advisor. They call it tight FA and also independent FA. So, a tight FA is someone who has an uh, someone who actually works in a financial planning firm like in mfpc we have a lot of financial planning firm who's actually joined with us so they actually have financial planner who's working under them so someone who actually has an agency or actually who's working in an agency who actually advises client how can they increase their wealth they become a wealth advisor and also a personal finance consultant to their client a relationship manager and also uh, and also for your information, private banker is also part of financial advisor because they give financial advice to their clients. So all this uh, category will come under tight financial advisor. For the independent financial advisor is a person who actually able to, uh, who's actually got the license from Bank Nagara. I, as I've told you just now, if you listen uh, carefully, I told you there's two types of license. One is the FA license, financial advisor from Bank Negara. And number two will be the security commission license, CMSRL. So uh, only if you have that license, you can practice this particular profession by yourself. So again, an independent financial advisor is someone who holds the CMSL license under the security commission or holds as, as what I've explained to you, everything is there. And also, they, they also charge professional fees. Uh, they have no sales quota to fulfill. So basically, how much you work is that much that you work for yourself. So in this case, you will be an independent financial advisor, which there is no difference between a tight and independent. You will be having a wide range of products which you will be dealing with. So why make financial planning your career when there are so many career out there today you all are financial students after you all graduate you all will be googling in your job street finding for uh, okay i want to apply in this bank i want to apply in a local bank i want to apply in an international bank so we at mfpcb are coming and saying to you that hey come on i have a new career for you which is I mean, the name of the career is financial planner and why you should take up the uh, career is because of all these six reasons that we are having now, which is globalization and liberalize, uh, uh, liberalization, emergence of the global capital market, convergence of financial services and product, declining costs due to the advancement of, and improvements of technology, changes in regulation and licensing. So basically, what is this six, uh, six particular, I mean, uh, components telling us is that financial planner now you can actually um if you are well capable of and you have that particular license you can actually uh, practice this financial planning independently so you don't need to work under a company so this is this is the future and all as as we all now three currently we are in the cmco control movement order uh 
uh, state. You can see we are now all having webinar sessions online. We are having a uh, uh zoom sessions uh webinars and then we are also having online classes from our universities and many many such uh, examples that we are going online lecturers are using google uh, google classroom to actually upload your assignments into the system and you will be needing to take that particular uh, document, finish your assignment and submit to them back. So everything is in convergence. That's what number three is telling uh, as for the convergence part. So uh, financial planning career and also a one more uh, beautiful thing is that changes in regulation and licensing and security commission have given us a lot of opportunities for this particular career to succeed. They have also been actually um, making that particular benchmark for a person to actually become a financial planner lower and lower as, as as the years pass by why because in malaysia this particular financial plan uh, i mean financial uh, financial planner the demand is actually i mean not to say the demand the demand is there but the number of people who is uh, willing to take up that particular career is not there like compared to in singapore we the singapore has three to five times more financial um financial planner as as in malaysia three to five times more can you imagine how much of Im importance which they are giving into this particular career which is a financial planner and in uh, western countries there are 10 times or even more than 10 times more of a financial uh planner uh in their country so Today's talk is basically to let you know the importance of this. Uh, I mean, what does this career offer you? And later part, I will let you know how does MFPC come in between to help you to actually um, get this particular, uh, help you certify so that you can actually pursue this career. So again, the best jobs us news says that the 25 best business job is financial analyst and financial advisor this is the same thing which i told just now in western countries there are 10 times more more than 10 times of a financial uh, planner why you can see it in front of your eyes if you go to a western country or even need to go so far after pkp after cmco you go to singapore you go and talk to some of them you will see some of them saying okay so what do you do for a living and they'll be like I'm actually a financial planner. And you'll be like, huh? Financial planner? What is that? I never heard of it before. In Malaysia, I never heard people. And um, and where do you work? And then they'll be like, I work in a financial advisory firm. Financial advisory firm? I've never heard at all uh, in Malaysia. So that shows that we are actually far behind when it comes to globalization and change in the world. So that is where this particular slide is telling. So... She is uh, our Pwad Noor Fazlin from AKPK. She's one of the general manager when she's telling when financial knowledge alone is not enough. Yes, we can study a business degree. We can study a master's in business. I mean, uh, in, I mean, in financial. But the more we put that into practice in our daily life, that is what a financial planner will be doing. He'll be putting that particular knowledge in practice in a daily life. And when you put that into practice in a daily life, that shows uh, you will be a very uh suited and very true person to that particular career of uh as in a i mean in the financial field so next se launches five-year sri roadmap so again these are as what as i told you just now just now's previous slide is that government is giving us all the support to actually take up this career so it's whether students like you all want to take up that career or not to become a financial planner many People are waiting for you all out there, waiting for your advice, waiting whether will I uh, meet someone who can actually come and let me know how can I increase my wealth? How can I not, even though, even if cannot increase my wealth, also never mind, at least get me out from these debts which I'm facing, my car loan, my housing loan, my personal loan, my credit card loan. So you as students will be the future of this country so take up this career and start giving professional advice to i mean the clients which you meet so again uh, dr m anvil's new national strategy to boost financial literacy and the launch of the uh, national financial literacy 
FEN by the Financial Education Network. So currently, this uh, particular news actually lets uh, lets us I mean know that only Nagara have spoken to many financial institutions such as MFPC and also AKPK Commission and many such institutions. Actually, not only uh, not only perform their duties to actually conduct classes and training, but also to do financial literacy program in a in a in a uh, in a mass level uh, in public and all. So now since we cannot do in public, so we in online workshops. So this is the effort. The, uh, so being a financial planner, it requires skills and talents. Okay, first of all, no matter what career you are, you must always have that passion for career you must love what you are doing when you love what you are doing then only you can bring that knowledge to other people if you don't love what you're doing and then when you tell people about this 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 and then you're not full heartedly it so people cannot get that knowledge properly so that's where enthusiasm comes there professionalism when you deal with a client the clients uh, details is actually p and c we can't go and tell and share it with our friends and uh, any other client you know, uh, that day i deal with this client uh, he has been bit cut uh, and uh, you know such a big headache like actually uh, re uh restructure or do these things for him actually is very very important where we can have uh, client technical skills for example, construction of financial plan. When it comes to the construction of financial plan, skills is where MFPC comes in. We are here to provide you all those technical skills needed. At the end of my session, I will let you know what are the programs which MFPC provide so that you can take up this financial plan as a career and also take our program so that you can uh, sharpen all your skills and uh, be able to the country better so competition is yes as usual financial planner must have the ability to speak you must be able to uh, um, be able to mingle people as in even if you are not a very friendly and outgoing person at least for the content sake you must make sense to what you're telling your client uh, you're going to tell your client sir madam can you please unscribe uh, unscribe this particular loan uh, I mean, uh, this particular insurance. So your client will ask you, why I've been taking this particular insurance since I was a baby. I mean, my parents have been taking this particular insurance since I was a baby. So you must have proper communication skills that tone and also at the same technical skills. Actually, let them know what is what's the reason behind your particular construction of your financial plan. So next, you may so what are the qualifications i need to become a financial planner so that is where ta -ta -da, mfpc comes in so mfpc we are malaysian financial planning council we are actually uh, we are actually a baby and the child of uh more famous uh, uh dr zeti aziz uh, she's the former governor of negara malaysia so uh Basically, the history is simple. They wanted a Malaysian company and regulate a financial planning profession in Malaysia at the same time to provide uh, education and also knowledge to all the upcoming uh, generations so they can take up these particular programs for their future. So that's where our existence come to come to be. We have a uh, form program in particular. You can see the blue color above and the green color below all rfp registered financial planner and then be the module by module second and it will be the registered financial planner capstone capstone is like a six months program but for that you need to i mean i mean you need to have a certain requirement only that you can take the program same thing for islamic we have the sharia registered uh, sharia registered financial planner and also and then we have a capstone for that also which is the sharia registered financial planner capstone so our accreditation, we are actually accredited from the 
uh, NOS, which is uh, Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran JPK, FAA Financial Accreditation Agency, and HRDF Malaysia. As we all know, HRDF is the one who actually uh, is the body which actually uh, oversees quality of trainings, and FAA is the body which see the quality of content and education in Malaysia. So our programs are both approved by Bank Negara and Security Commissions. So again, just now I told you the small history uh, in a short in a short form. So this is the uh, slide for it. Yes, and before I miss, you can see our executive director there, very good. Have a very good spectacles. She's smiling. She's so happy with Dr. Zeti. Uh, they're actually looking onto um, photos, I think, looking from the slide, they're looking at some photos and some uh, brochures and all in, uh, in fair. So, uh, programs, which is the Sharia RFP. Uh, so, the Sharia RFP program was launched by uh, Dato Sri Khalid Nordin on 21st August 2008. And also, our RFP program was launched by Dr. Zeti itself on November 2002. Okay, so this is the uh, course outline, module 1 to 7 for RFP and module 1 to 7 for Sharia RFP. So students, very simple. I've already spoken to your lecture, Dr. Fadila. Previously, when we came for, um, previously, when we came for, uh, uh, for a workshop talk, uh, uh, UIA, I've already spoken. To her. We are in the midst of actually doing the mapping and also uh, providing the education for uh, UIA. Due to the CMCO, there's been a little bit of uh, hiccups here and there. So we will be getting in touch with you all very soon. Please be in contact with Dr. Fadila. I will send her all the details. And how do we plan to incorporate these particular modules inside your education? Uh, degree itself. So please do uh, keep in touch with her so that we can see how we can uh, bring this module to you all. So regulations and licensing. So uh, this is okay. So basically, there are two types of license here. Uh, one is the FAR and CMSRL. So okay, what is this slide telling is very simple. You see, um, uh, when we actually from MFPC, when we actually in these particular modules in your syllabus very very soon it's happening very soon so what will happen is if you have module one two and three itself you can already be uh, available i mean you can already apply for the far license which is the financial advisor representative and you have in and if you have module one three and six uh already been uh, been exempted you just have to come to MFPC to take TPFP, and then you can already uh, have the CMSR uh, capital, uh, capital market services. So basically, the difference between this license, basically, FAR is a financial planning uh, license where that license actually allows you to um, sell any types of products in any range, life, any such products, and you are able to uh advise your clients in any such categories but capital market services representative license CMSRL, focuses most on uh investment like security commissions uh, investment related products so you will need to see for yourself what is your passion and uh, what is your interest in are you interested in uh, investment you can go for cmsrl or if you're interested in any types of product life uh non motor then you can go for FAL. So these are the role and coverage for FAR and CMSRL. So these are all the uh, sub chapters which you will be going through. Lah. Cash flow management, risk management, estate planning, retirement planning, succession planning, key person planning. So, okay. So this is what everyone is talking about now. FinTech and TechFin. So, uh, we, this slide is very simple. What it's telling is that currently having a lot of convergence in everything that we are doing. 
we don't need to go to a bank physically now to actually uh, see what is our balance in our bank or CIMB or any such account. We already have an e-account in our phone, which one in the app, we can already see how much, to who we transfer the money to, what time, what date, and we can choose to transfer money to even another person using our phone itself. We can download our statements uh, three months bank statements via our headphone, our our laptop itself or computer. So a lot of things can be done via your handphone itself. Now you can even send an email on enquiries to the bank regarding any of your enquiries. So this is what it's telling fintech and tech fee. So opportunities is again just now how are financial planners being paid? Three ways. Uh, number one, fee base assets under management and commission. So, fee base, what will happen is basically you charge a uh, client base on an hourly basis, assets under management. For example, your client has assets uh, 500,000. So, after you finish that particular project, you say, okay, 10% or let's say 5% of that particular, or let's say 1% of that particular. Uh, project we, uh, we will be actually uh, taking it as uh, fees lah. that would be the assets under management commissions commission is usually for investment or insurance product so example when you sell a product in your financial plan you will be receiving commission so the construction of financial plan is crucial for a financial planner like when you see a doctor the one very crucial thing which you, which he will have always with him is the stethoscope. Wherever he go, anytime he will be checking the heartbeat of the patient. Okay, how how is the heartbeat using his stethoscope? So for the same thing for the financial planner, the very most crucial thing is the construction of financial plan. So that is what you will be doing for your client and you'll be passing it to them. And through that financial plan is where your clients will be able to change their financial habits. So place where a uh, financial planner work, credit counseling organization, accounting firms, life insurance companies, financial planning organization, banks, pension administrator organization, education institution, law firms, auditing firm, large companies also. So these are the many places you can work. If you choose that you don't want to uh, take a license, you want to uh, independently uh, practice it, you can also choose to work at so many places. So as I said just now, once you already graduate with this particular module in your program itself, which, which is what I spoke to Dr. Fadila, automatically you will be provided work at financial advisory firms so you will once you already have that three or six modules with you a financial advisory firm will actually hire you actually after you graduate you actually not to say you don't have any work you already have work for you so and as i told you financial planning planner is now a very demanding career where people want staff for them so you have a work you have a work after graduate even though in all these uh, uh, difficult situations so artificial intelligence replacing job you can see that so more like more and more everything is becoming automated nowadays right everything is being automated every single thing you go last time when you go past the toll it will be touched i mean it will be a person passing you the cut right like in check ni ala cut and then once you exit your toll, you, you'll be passing the card, they let you know how much. But now it's everything touch and go. And not even touch and go. Now we have RFID and previously smart tech, where you just need to pass through that lane and they will already detect how much uh, money has been cost for the whole entire journey. So this is very simple. It's telling us what uh what careers which can be easily be uh easily be uh, replaced as we can see this slide makes sense now very much we have we are in the cmco period now you can see the manufacturing industry accommodation hotels food industries transportation is badly hit due to the uh cmco which is the due to the covid 19 period 
So we can see and look at the top bottom three, which is the professionals, management and educational services. And look at educational services when you're providing advisory or training or education. The work is actually is actually uh, very difficult to be actually automated. A lot of that ask why. So I just uh, again we will go go back. I am uh, ready to give Samo MFPC of uh, MFPC T-shirts. Can you just uh, put in your answers in the chat box? Let me know why do you think that uh, professions when it comes to uh, professionals management and, and especially educational services and providing advisory such as financial planner is difficult to be uh, replaced. Can I see your answers? So, uh, okay, so I'm waiting for your input. Okay, Izati Wong has said that this particular uh, works need critical thinking. Yes, correct, Izati. You are absolutely right. And previously, uh, Avana Safinas has said that it requires skills to input data in the system. Correct, correct. We actually, uh, we actually needed to actually tell the system how it should work. So no matter how much laptop and all we have, we still have this particular, uh, we, I mean, like this, as the people from the professional education and management, we are the one who will be telling the system how it should work and how will our, our clients be seeing it. So correct, uh, Ava, Safinas and Izati, congrats. Any other answers before I move on? So okay, so looks like um, we. I mean, we we have those two answers from Awa Safinas and Izati. Thank you so much, Awa Safinas and Izati. Awesome answers, and I will be getting in touch with you. Uh, passing you the MFPC T-shirt. So currently, from UIA, I'm giving the MFPC T-shirt to four people, which is Awa Safinas, Izati Wong, and just now was uh, Shakira Rahman and also my Sarah Lukman. Congrats to these uh, four girls who's actually so brave coming up in front and actually letting know what they think, which is awesome, uh, girls, awesome. So now let's continue with our slides for today. Uh, what's happening is, um, if you look at the slides, uh, it says that, uh, one second, yeah. Okay, so 2020, actually this slide really makes sense, yeah? Now it feels spooky. How does this slide know what's happening in 2020, right? How does this slide know 2020? If you're going to have PKP and CMCO, people are work from home, this is what exactly is happening now. We need critical thinking, complex problem solving, creativity, people management, coordinating others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, service orientation, negotiation, cognition, and flexibility. So all this, which is what, which will help us in our future. So that particular three top low profession, which I was telling you the top below one, eh, this is the education, management, and profi uh, professionals. We actually deal with all this. You can always go to a teacher and ask her, teacher, do you have all this? The teacher will say, yes. Teacher, how do you have all this? It's because I got no choice. I have to students. When I deal with students, I will be, or when I normally, when I deal with people itself, I need to have all these skills. So if you, these are the skills which you need to develop so that you can uh, be uh, sustainable and also provide your particular services to clients. So bookkeepers, uh, many of the students, I and many universities will know keepers. Last time in this uh, king world, this person called keeper, a data entry person, very simply. Like. Now they also hire data entry person, but in a very low salary, maybe like 500 or 1000 ringgit. Their work is to daily go to work and just put in the data. So, uh, especially the calculation, 
tracking related data put in the data. So if you are a bookkeeper, there's 97.6% of funds automated. So remember one thing, always uh, work for your passion, work for what you like compared to what you have been, uh, you have been uh, forced to do. So do what you love. So that is where it will be very difficult to replace you. So bookkeepers can be easily replaced because another human can always become a bookkeeper. It's not difficult. You're just going to put the data into the computer and another person also can come and do it. And now worse still, no need another person to put in also. We put everything in Excel or any such programming uh, 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 software in the computer, all your answers come out. Then why do we need... Um, then why do we need a human here? So the human touch is gone for bookkeeping itself. So these are all the, um, how uh, detailedly they're telling how it becomes more automated or less automated, the particular professions. So in conclusion, okay, okay, so, so in conclusion, all we need is actually a work which actually makes us feel happy at the same time, um, a work which will, which will be difficult to be replaced. Like now everything is being replaced. Soon many people, uh, due to CMCO, many has lost their work in Malaysia and also in Singapore and many other countries. So we need a work which will not be uh, replaced we, I mean, we actually don't want robots to replace us. So, and we don't want robots to replace us. We must uh, choose a career which will be very, very uh, suitable for us. So, example, as I say again, financial planner as a career is actually a very good and very sustainable career in the upcoming future. So, let us go a little bit about uh, MFPC itself. I think we have another 10 more minutes. So, um, again, I've already explained to you and we have many chapters around in countries chapters are more like sub branches we have one in kl we have uh, kl is us and then we have one at joho penang sarawak and many such states we have uh, many members up to date more than fourteen thousand actually as per current numbers so mfpc again their main uh, main uh, role is to actually uh promote nationwide development and enhancement of the financial planning profession in malaysia so that is where today we have come to actually explain to you regarding the financial planning profession so recognition and awards these are all our awards so these are our mfpc individual members numbers as of january 2020 so our total members as of january 2020 is 14176 members so when you join us in mfpc you will be joining in as a student member and upon you able to uh, finish up more and more of our modules you will be actually being upgraded to an ordinary member so that's what this slides uh, shows so MFPC corporate members, we have nine affiliates, 13 chartered financial services institution, three chartered promoter organization, 15 financial services institution, two financial services organization, and we also work with 24 financial services firm. So we actually work with many financial services firm and we actually send many of our intern students uh, who's registered with us to go and intern at these particular companies or so. So later, uh, at the end of this program, I'll be in uh, my uh, email address. So if you would like to do any internship with this particular firm, please do email me your resume and I will definitely pass it to uh, the relevant uh, financial services firm who's hiring at the moment. So, so these are all the uh, logos of all the firms who are with us from the Namlifa, MII, Life Insurance, and then the Chartered Financial Services Institution, CHFSI, Financial Services Members, Financial Services Firm. So if you send me your resume, I'll be sending it to all this, one of this, um, many of this uh, financial services firm. So our affiliate corporate members, 
Ah, these are all our education providers and also collaborating universities. Many universities already taken in our modules, such as USIM, University of Science Islam Malaysia, and many such universities. So now we are trying to speak, we are actually speaking with UIA, Dr. Fadila. So hope all goes on well. If all goes on well, this particular MFPC modules will already be in your existing degree itself. So we also organize many workshops, uh, public workshops, uni workshops. So this you can see previously at USM, UTM, UM. These are all traditional workshops. Today I'm with you in an online workshop. <laughs> so this is our publication. We have a journal of uh, wealth management and financial planning. Uh, this is more like a... Uh, 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 it's more like a, a practitioner journal uh, where a lot of research and uh, academic related papers are published. So this, as, this is what I was letting you know about just now, which is the financial planning internship program. I will be putting my email address here later. Please send me your resumes if you are going to go for your internship already. And I will actually pass your resumes to that particular financial firms which we are having in ties with to actually try to secure, to see whether you can uh, get a, a internship with them. So these are our 33 as of uh, 2020 financial advisors. Okay. So capital market services license holders. So a financial planner should be the leader, not a mere follower not an adapter so a financial planner should be a cutting edge not conventional not mainstream so basically as a financial planner you must be the leader but you must be always also willing to learn from others your colleagues from your uh, seniors and your uh, from your teachers so that you will be not only a leader or a boss who just uh, or, or or a person who just demands a certain thing, but, but a person who actually are uh, able to have a reason, reasoning behind it, a knowledge behind it, a development behind what you're doing. So that is what the financial planner is all about. So thank you so much for joining me in this uh, financial planner as a career workshop. Again, I'm uh, telling, I repeating, uh, don't forget to actually send me your resume for those students who are in your final year. I will be, uh, who will be doing internship, I will be actually sending your resume to my, uh, I mean the financial uh, services firm which we are in ties with, so that uh, we can try to secure for you an internship placement there. Then you can see, I, I would suggest just go for an internship at a, a financial advisory firm. Just have an experience. Whether you like it or you don't like it is secondary, but at least you go and try and see. Maybe you like it. Maybe you love it. So maybe you can already take it as your career. So later I will be posting it, uh, my email address in the chat box. So please send me your resume, updated resume with your full name, your course, and also your degree, and also your uh, what are the subjects which you have taken in your semesters. So thank you so much for joining me in this session we have a next next will be we have a wonderful uh, sharing session uh, from our mr sharol nizam from the federation of uh, investment managers malaysia they are our invited speakers for today's uh, talk so uh, without further ado i will be passing the uh, session to him Hi, uh, everyone. Thank you, uh, Nima. So I hope uh, you can hear me clearly. Yes, sir, we can hear you. OK, thank you. Uh, so let me share the screen now. I hope that uh, everybody is able to see my presentation on the screen.
Okay, thank you, Anis, uh, for responding to that. Uh, okay, a uh, very good morning to all. Uh, Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. I'm uh, Shahrul Nizam Taino from uh, Federation of Investment Managers uh, Malaysia. So basically, I'll be talking about unit trust and uh, private retirement scheme investment too, uh, as the long uh, for the long term uh, investment. Okay. And uh, okay, we, we will go straight away to uh, this product. Uh, basically, uh, Federation of uh, Investment Managers Malaysia or FIMM is the organization that uh, govern uh, uh, these two products in Malaysia, Unit Trust Scheme, uh, or in Malay, uh, you call it uh, Saham uh, Unit. Uh, private uh, scheme, uh, which is Besaraan Start. Okay, uh, I'll be talking about these two products. Uh, basically, uh, for you to know about these two products as one of the investment tools available in the market, in the capital market, and, uh, I would say that it's, it's uh, very suitable for you as a student a young generation to start to invest in uh, in the capital market okay so that is unit plus scheme okay it's a form of uh, a collective investment scheme that allow investors with similar investment objective to pool their funds to be invested in portfolio of securities or asset okay uh, i'm sure with your background of uh, education and the course that you are taking in UIA, uh, you be familiar with uh, those uh, words of securities or assets, uh, investment, uh, portfolio. Yeah. So, you ask basically is a collective investment, uh, meaning that uh, you would share uh, with a uh, few other people uh, your money to buy uh, asset or security. Uh, at our Bursa okay. So, okay, so these are the assets of securities that can be at our Bursa And uh, I give you, for example, okay, in with this fund, okay, in Bursa, we have more than uh, 800 counters hundreds of companies that are selling the, the shares of the big Busa uh, and uh, we as a public go to Busa and buy these shares okay saham uh, saham uh, and uh, to buy these shares uh, at Busa normally they are selling the shares at uh, a lot of uh, consisting of 1000 uh, units okay so basically for you to trade or in, in a simple language for you to buy uh, shares in Busa Malaysia, Busa Malaysia need to buy one lot. One lot will consist of 1,000 units of the shares. Okay. And, uh, if I were to give an example like uh, if you want, you interested to buy national shares. Okay, Tenaga National, uh, if I not mistake today, the, the price about 12 ringgit something, say 12 ringgit and Okay. And uh, if you were to buy uh, this uh, Tenaga National or TNB, uh, as you need to buy what 1,000 you need, you will need to have 1,000 ringgit 500. Okay, uh, so do you have the money? Okay, as a student, as a young generation just started. Uh, to live on your own, to you have that money to buy one lot of a TNP share will will cost you twelve thousand plus. Okay, it's more. Then how you can buy these shares? Okay, so the answer is through unit trust. Okay, so unit trust scheme will allow you to buy shares the TNP, any other shares that you some measure. Uh, through purchasing need in the unit. Okay, let's play on how you can do this. 
So basically, what you need is you just look for unit trust that are uh, invested in uh, buying uh, the Naga National shares and to buy those uh, units in the trust scheme. Okay. So what happens is that you basically share your money. Let's say you need 1,000 Okay. And 1,000 is not enough for you to buy the NP share if you were to go direct to the share. So if you can uh, units in the unit trust scheme at the cost of ringgit, okay, your 1,000 ringgit put together with other people, say another 20 people in their money of 1,000 ringgit, so the company will 1,000 ringgit, 1,000 ringgit to use by other national as 12,000 plus per lot. Okay. So basically, you are sharing the the ownership of the shares of TNB with other people. So that, that is in the simple language. And that makes you possible for you to buy the Naga National shares even though you don't have enough money to buy yeah, uh, earlier. Okay, what are the advantages of uh, investing through unit trust uh, scheme? Okay. As I said uh, earlier, affordability means that you now afford to buy shares. Okay, if you look at the Busa Malaysia counters, you will see that there are a lot of uh, shares being traded, and they can range from uh, even up uh, maybe two cents per share up to hundred ringgit uh, per share. So it's all about whether you afford to buy these shares or not. Of course, if two cent uh, shares. Uh, with the, the, the value of the share is two cents, then you can buy for one uh, lot, which is 1,000, so not issue for you to buy. Yeah, it's only 200 ringgit, but then uh, for uh, 100 ringgit shares, then you will need 100,000 100, yeah, to buy uh, one lot uh, shares. Okay, so through uh, unit trust uh, scheme, you will afford to buy all the share even though you don't have enough money. Secondly, the advantage is you diversify your investment. So now you not only be able to buy the Naga National shares, but you also can buy other counters, yeah, uh, the Pronas or any other counters that you would like to buy uh, at Pusam Malaysia and by diversify your investment, you maximize your uh, potential to have a profit uh, from this investment. Yeah? So you are not putting your eggs into one basket, but you are putting in, in a many basket. Therefore, you lower your risk of uh, losing, and but you are increasing the risk of profit as well. Yeah? Uh, liquidity. Uh, through unit trust scheme, if you buy any units in unit trust scheme, uh, it will be easier for you to liquidate the investment. So, for example, just now you have bought a, a unit trust scheme for the amount of 1,000 ringgit. So, at any time, you also can sell back that uh, investment, okay, but subject to the current price of that share, uh, of that unit trust. So, what I'm saying here is that uh, it's easier for you to back your money if you need to. Compared to if you were to uh, yes, uh, buy over at the Busan Malaysia. Okay, you need to find a, a buyer uh, shares in order to liquidate your so it will back. and uh, maybe sometimes the price offer also is not uh, attractive enough. And nobody will buy your shares, so you will have a difficulty uh, to liquidate your, your investment. Okay, but for unit trust, you can buy anytime and sell at any time. Okay, there's no restriction. Uh, then this investment actually is managed by a professional uh, management. Okay, uh, a licensed fund managers uh, who are licensed this commission uh, to uh, analysis and also to make decision on which fund or which shares to be bought yeah, for that particular fund. 
going back to the example just now, choose to buy a uh, unit trust, let uh, the scheme A, okay, and uh, that's invest in the uh, in the technology uh, company uh, like the IT companies and, and also maybe oil and company. so all decisions are being made by the professional fund managers. They will make the necessary analysis and make sure that this uh, company uh, making profit and will be able to give a return to the to the investment and therefore then only they will uh, decide to buy the, the shares to be included in that uh, unit trust scheme. Okay? So you don't have to worry about your investment, uh, you know, I'm not going to, to I mean, it's, it's not, uh, I don't say that it's guaranteed to give you a profit, but uh, at least it is managed by a, a group of uh, fortunate people. Yeah? And then uh, exposure, uh, basically, by having uh, investment in unit trust scheme, you are exposing your investment to uh, many types of shares. Yeah, uh, or so you you have a, you have a more uh, exposure in terms of uh, the choice of the equities that you want to invest. So you can invest in oil and gas company. You can invest in technology company. You can invest in property. So a lot of uh type of uh yeah assets that you can involve in uh rather than if you only buy uh tnb so you just stuck there and you, know, you cannot uh, uh expose your investment to other assets okay if you have any question just uh drop your question in the chat box and uh be more than happy to, to answer your question Okay, uh, this is the ecosystem of the whole uh, uh, fund management or our our collective investment scheme or the unit trust uh, fund in Indonesia. So basically, uh, what I can uh, describe about this ecosystem is that you can see every single thing has been taken uh, into consideration and there are parties who are uh, responsible for each of the, 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 the areas here okay so this is the fund okay and basically you will have the fund managers the fund managers or who are our members uh, they are FIM members uh, unit trust uh, management company and uh, also PRS, uh, PRS provider and also the fund managers so these are the people who create the uh, the scheme, the unit trust scheme. So you will hear uh, currently we have more than 600 over uh, fund that has been created. Okay, and uh, uh, these are the, the, the managers that created the fund and also managing the fund. Okay. Then you will have the distributor. Distributor is the one who distribute this fund. Okay, so distributor in this case we have a lot of uh, uh, salespeople, we have uh, banks who also distribute and market as, uh, the, the fund. Okay, and uh, the most, uh, the the the, uh, the biggest number of uh, distributor basically is the unit trust consultant. Okay, we have more than 80,000 consultant uh, registered with us right now who are authorized to, to sell and market unit trust fund as well as a PRS uh, fund okay uh, and then uh, we have the third one is the most important one is the trustee so trustee is the protector basically you see when you buy a unit trust scheme let's say that 1000 ringgit and that money is going to be used to buy a, another national uh, asset so the ownership of that uh, asset will belong to the trustee okay because we are sharing uh, the money to buy one share so we cannot have uh, 10 names in the in the chair uh, as a custodian so what we do is that uh, the the shares will be belong to the trustee 
and your name will be there as one of the party uh, you know have the hat uh, that has uh, rights to the the shares okay so basically we are not worried about somebody who run away with that shares eh? because it is uh, protected by the trustee and the trustee here are also responsible to ensure that if let's say the fund managers here they close shop the company here making losses and all that close shop so the trustee what they will do is basically they will sell off that pmb shares and they will return back the money to you so you don't have to worry about your money will be uh, taken away by the uh, fund manager who will shop okay and then uh, we have the unit holder or the investor this is you okay basically uh, not only individual but we also have a lot of other categories of uh, investor for example the companies or the institution uh, we have kwsp we also uh, buy a lot of uh, share i mean uh, trust scheme uh, lembaga uh, tabung akata transfer ftap and also uh, WAP kumpulan wang uh, di uh, uh, pesaraan eh? uh, so government bodies uh, states eh? so all these are the investor so they bought the uh, investment in the uh, unit trust scheme okay uh, so all these people are regulated by our capital market services act and uh, under that we FIMM has been given the power uh, to exercise the, and, and to govern the whole thing. So basically, all these things are regulated. Okay, so you don't have to worry about this thing is not being uh, recognized or not being licensed or not being approved by anybody. But all these are uh, properly uh, uh, governed by the Securities Commission uh, through the Capital Market Services Act. Okay, uh, let's go to private retirement scheme. Okay, private retirement scheme is a voluntary long-term saving and investment scheme designed to help you to save uh, more for you for your retirement. Okay, so in a nutshell, what I can say is that private retirement scheme is similar to EPF. Okay, I hope that everybody aware about what is EPF. Okay, EPF is basically a uh, body that uh, will keep your money uh, for your uh, retirement okay so if you start to work uh, later you have to contribute certain amount of uh, your salary on monthly basis to epf and epf will keep the money until you reach the age of 55 years old then only you can take back the money okay so private retirement scheme it works on the same basis uh, but this is a voluntary okay they are not mandatory epf is mandatory for all uh, workers in malaysia yeah? but prs is a voluntary okay meaning that uh, you are not uh, uh, mandatory to contribute but you can choose whether you want to contribute or not okay what would be the advantage uh, and all that i will explain later okay so basically in Malaysia you will have a few other uh, uh, retirement scheme yeah? like the LTAT, uh, EPF, of course the biggest one. Okay, Quark is for the government servant, yeah? the pension. So this is uh, Quark. Okay, and uh, we also have some companies that have your own uh, uh, retirement scheme. Yeah? Okay, so basically, as I mentioned just now, PRS is a voluntary, and uh, because of that, it will be good for you as a student to start to invest in PRS. Okay, uh, you see, because the nature of PRS is voluntary, you have the options to contribute or not to contribute. So it doesn't mean that you have to contribute on monthly basis. Uh, you can 
contribute as and when you want. But I will advise you to uh, make yourself disciplined to contribute at least on monthly basis. Yeah? And uh, the amounts also is not fixed, not like EPF. EPF have a standard uh, percentage of your salary to be contributed. But for PRS, there is no uh, standard or uh, mandatory amount that you need to contribute. You can contribute as, as much as you can and also as, as frequent as you can. Yeah? So basically, it's an affordable saving. As I mentioned, it is the same uh, concept as EPF, whereby all the money that you contribute to PRS cannot be withdrawn until the age of 55 years old. So this is in line with the objective of PRS to provide you with a saving for your retirement days. Yeah? And then this is, uh, of course, designed for retirement. Uh, of course, actually, we, the government allow for you to withdraw the money from the yeah? oh. but that will be uh you be you be no, 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 like uh, penalty for for that if you choose to withdraw and uh, the withdrawal is only allowed once a year yeah and uh, it's not for the whole amount but it's only from the account b yeah? uh, prs also have two accounts just like uh epf uh, epf account one and account two PRS is account A and account B. Yeah? And uh, if you notice the recent uh, announcement by our Prime Minister on the uh, incentive for the COVID-19, one of it is uh, to allow for the uh, PRS uh, contributor to uh, withdraw their money from the account B yeah? uh, up to maximum 1,500. Okay. I hope that uh, you can mute your mic uh, so I can hear some sound. Okay. Uh, so, and uh, for PRS, there is a tax incentive. But currently, government is giving a, uh, giving a tax incentive up to 3,000 ringgit uh, for the uh, investment that you put in into PRS. Yeah, but of course, not applicable to you right now because you are not uh, working, you don't pay tax. But for those who are paying tax, they will get a tax incentive up to 3000 Okay, And then uh, the same as UTI, uh, Unit Trust Scheme, this is a regulated uh, framework. Okay, PRS is, uh, there is uh, another organization to, uh, we call the PR, Private Retirement uh, Scheme uh, Administrator. Uh, the this uh, the PPA yeah? PPA is the one who admin uh, or manage uh, all the PRS uh, investment. So basically, they are the one uh, like become the trustee for PRS. Okay, and easy investment. Uh, as I mentioned just now, you can make your investment at any point. Uh, so basically, let's say you started with a uh, uh, first uh, investment in PRS with uh, let's say 100 ringgit okay and uh, next month uh, because of uh, COVID-19 you work as a uh, food partner or grab and then you earn more than you want to put uh, some more money than you can put let's say 200 ringgit and the following one let's say you don't have much money and all that you, you, you cannot contribute so you can stop contributing uh, maybe two months later, you have another money, then you can put in. So, you see, it's very flexible. It doesn't require you to, to put in your money on a monthly basis, but you can also, you know, uh, choose to put in or not, and also the amounts can be uh, flexible as well. Okay. So, the beauty of this one, all your money invested in the PRS will be invested in the unit trust scheme. And as you know, normally unit trusting will give a better returns to your investment. Okay, so compared to if you were to put your money in a fixed deposit, which will give you maybe about three uh, percent return. Okay, you might get five six percent return if you were to put in a unit trust scheme. And for some of the scheme, uh, a good one will offer you up to even twelve fifteen percent. Yeah? But these are all not guaranteed. 
uh, you must remember that any investment doesn't guarantee the return. Okay, there is a risk. Okay, so this is the fundamental of investment. Okay, uh, I, I saw one question just now, but I wouldn't see the question already. Uh, Nima, did you see the question? Can you read the question for me? Yes, Mr. Sharon Nizam. The question is, uh, it says that, uh, sir, what is the difference between EPF and PRS? Because I see both products are quite similar. That's his question. Okay, as I mentioned just now, the main difference is about uh, the frequency for investment and also the amount to invest. Okay, EPF, you have to invest on a monthly basis and it is a mandatory. You cannot do any... Uh, you know, you cannot go to EPF say, no, this month I cannot uh, contribute to EPF because I need to use the money for other purpose. Okay. But whatever it is, you, your, your salary will be deducted on a monthly basis to be contributed into EPF. Okay. That is uh, under the law. Okay. But for PRS, there's no such requirement. Okay. You can, you can put your money this month. You don't want to put your money next month because you need to use the money for uh, other things. And then maybe you stop for two months, then later you continue back. There's no uh, uh, issues about that and uh, your your investment is still will be there. Not like uh, insurance, okay? Insurance, like if you have to pay every month, if you don't pay and you let for at one or two months, then your policy will become uh, null and void. It means that it's not enforced uh, anymore. But for for PRS, it's not the same. Huh? Whatever money that you have put in the PRS will still will be there, but you only can take it when you reach 55 years old. Okay, So that is the main difference between EPF and PRS. And even the amount also can vary. This month, if you have uh, more money, you can put more. Next month, you have less, then maybe you can put 50 ringgit. Okay? And maybe later you get uh, you know, a lot of money because uh, you're doing business and all that, then you can put 500 ringgit. Then later you want to put 100 ringgit. It's okay. So there's no, there's no uh, limits or there's no, there is a minimum amount, yeah, but of course it, the amount can vary uh, every, every time. And the frequency also can be like on daily basis, on monthly basis, on weekly, uh, or even if you want to put every six months also, it's okay. Yeah, so that will be the main uh, difference between EPF and uh, PRS. I hope I answer your question. Any other question, Nima, uh, on the screen? No, sir. As far as uh, that is only one sir, at the moment. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, our advertisement material uh, that we use to promote for PRS. Uh, you know, as I mentioned here, kids go up so fast nowadays. Uh, to share my to share also my experience, I have uh, two kids uh, that already reached uh, 18 years old, and I started uh, PRS scheme for them, uh, just as a minimum as 50 ringgit per month. So if you calculated the amount of the investment, if you consistently put 50 ringgit per month, uh, and then if let's say up to 55 years old. Uh, my kid will be at least will be getting about two hundred or three hundred thousand. So that that is not inclusive if there is any uh uh what I would say return or, or you know uh, dividends uh even so it can be goes to five hundred thousand also. So you know you start small now. Uh, the reason why I'm starting for them is because I want them to have these uh, habits uh, even though now maybe they don't earn anything they are, they are still at college okay uh, i'll be paying for them but once they start to work i will ask them or i will force them to you know invest continue invest and invest more so that by 55 years old they will have more money to spend for their retirement okay 
So it is easy for you to open any uh, PRS account. You just approach any of our uh, PRS provider. Uh, you can go to our website uh, at fimm.com.my and you can check the list of uh, PRS provider. Uh, most of them are the banks and you can uh, go there and ask for more details about how to sign up for PRS account. Uh, okay, before that, I'll be sharing with you one uh, important uh, information about what Nima has been said uh, before about the uh, MFPC modules and all that. Uh, I have a very good news for all of you as a student. And uh, if any one of you want to know what is the secret to success, uh starting from now when you're still a student and when you graduate you will be a financial planner and also you can sell uh prs and also unit trust uh with a with a, a huge uh, income uh just stay tuned i will share with you at the end of my presentation yeah okay uh i'm going to share with you uh who are we uh, the federation of investment managers Malaysia. Okay, uh, uh, in short, FIMM. Okay, we are the self regulatory organization, or in short, uh, SRO. Uh, SRO status is given by the Securities Commission under a specific uh, uh, section in the uh, Capital Market Services Act. Yeah. So, in the CMSA that provides uh, Securities Commission the power to uh, appoint an uh, organization to become a self regulatory organization. So basically, self-regulatory organization is an organization that govern their own members uh, for a particular uh, industry. Okay. So we regulate uh, the marketing and distribution of unit trust scheme, okay, and also the private retirement scheme. Okay. So basically, this uh, power of uh, regulates comes from the uh, unit trust uh, uh, the. Capital Market Services Act itself. Uh, yes, Nima, is there any, any question just now? Yes, sir. We have uh, two questions. Uh, one is from um, uh, Miss Bahira. Uh, Bahira. Her question is, I uh, believe that that is the frequency in terms of products, I believe is the same to the UT product. Same to UT product. That's a question. I believe uh, uh, it is the same to UT product. Hmm. Okay, second question. Second question would be from uh, Mr. Hafiz Kirudin. She says that, uh, Salam sir, in PRS, is the investment return into the account would be calculated by yearly basis, like how Amana Saham Berhad did? That's the question, sir. Okay, uh, I'll answer Bahira's question just now. Yes, uh, Bahira. Uh, as I mentioned just now, all the money that you put in the PRS uh, investment, that money will be invested in a selected uh, unit trust fund. Okay, the fund manager of the PRS will determine which uh, unit trust fund to be invested in. So basically, in PRS, you will have uh, another selection of uh, fund that you want to to choose from based on your risk appetite. So basically, there are three categories, whether uh, you know you would like to go for the growth one or you want to have a fixed income. Okay, so based on your uh, your selection, you will choose which kind of uh, PRS fund that you would, like, you would like to invest in. So once you invested in that uh, particular PRS fund, that money will be invested in the unit trust fund. Okay, so the money will be uh, invested in several unit trust based uh, unit trust fund based on the selection made by the fund managers. Okay, so basically, uh, whenever the unit trust fund give the return, so you also will get the return in your PRS uh, fund. Okay, uh, and to answer the Hafiz uh, question as well, yes. Uh, it is uh, the same. The return are given on a yearly basis based on, it depends also, some of the fund have, uh, uh, they declare dividend every six months. 
uh, some the uh, most of the fund declare dividends on a yearly basis so uh, you will get the return on a yearly basis or every six months based on the fund uh, uh, features uh, basically so you need to check the prospectus of the fund see when they pay the dividend okay okay uh, so FIMM is the SRO uh, that regulate and uh, the marketing and distribution of uh, unit trust and also private retirement scheme. Okay, and uh, we do supervision. Uh, basically, we supervise all the unit trust management company that issues the unit trust fund as well as the private uh, retirement scheme uh, providers. Okay, so basically, our activity we go to the companies, we check their accounts, we check their documents, and all that. We make sure that they have a, a group of uh, licensed fund manager to manage the fund. We make sure that they have a proper documentation, proper control, proper SOP, everything. So uh, basically, we are just like the police who are checking on all the uh, requirement and the, the compliance of the uh, company. Yeah? And uh, at the same time, we are also the industry focal point okay uh, industry focal point here basically we represent the industry we are the voice of the unit trust company and also the prs company yeah and uh, any uh, comments or feedback uh, from the uh, uh, industry we will bring it to the government for their consideration for example uh, at this moment, we are busy with uh, we are busy with uh, preparing the proposal to the government for the federal budget. Okay, so if you look at uh, every year, whenever the announcement of federal budget, there will be some incentive uh, given to the industry and all that. Uh, that will come from us as the spokesperson for the industry. Okay, and uh, we also do enforcement, uh, we do supervision, if we found something is not right, we will take action. Okay, so, one here can be on the uh, company for not fulfilling the requirement, as well as on the consultant who are selling and marketing the unit charge and also PRF for not following the rules and also sometimes the code of ethics. Yeah, for example, if a consultant uh, uh, asks any of the investor uh, to uh, sign the form without properly uh, explaining to them on the investment and all that, and the investor complains to us, we will take action. Okay? Then uh, we do investor education. Uh, this is our effort. Uh, like today's session is part of our effort. Uh, effort to educate the investor, the public on the investment in units and also PRF. We do roadshows, we participate in uh, in uh, uh, conference, in seminar, in, in uh, uh, roadshows, other things such as MPC as well, to promote and also to educate the public on this class uh, and PRS. Okay, uh, we do education and training. This is mainly for consultant. Our consultant are so-called professional who have taken examination and uh, after they have passed the examination, then only they can become the consultant. And uh, not only that, they are required to constantly uh, educate themselves and attend training and therefore they need to meet certain uh, CPD points, continuing professional uh, development uh, programs that we have developed. And they have to attend certain training on a daily basis in order for their registration to be renewed every year. Okay, so we are very serious about ensuring our consultants to be uh, updated in terms of their knowledge and also they are they having the right skill to you know service the, the customer or the, the investor. Okay, we also develop a standard and best practices for the industry. Uh, for the company to follow and also for the consultant. Yeah. Uh, this is to give an idea to all of you how big the industry is. Okay. 
uh, as for 2019, okay, last year, we have 544 billion okay, uh, ringgit in uh, net asset value, meaning that the total value of all the investment in unit class and PRS is 544 billion. Okay, and you can see when we first started uh, this industry in 1993, it's only 28 billion and it has uh, you know, uh, increased and uh, grown to four. 544 billion. So it's a, it's a, it is a big uh, industry. Okay, uh, if you refer to the, the asset view. Yeah. Any questions so far? Is there any questions? For now, no, sir. Still okay. the same questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And this is, uh, as mentioned earlier, the number of consultants that we have, the rate uh, represent the unit trust consultant, which we have about uh, close to 60,000 now. And the, the blue color is the PRS consultant, 25,000. And uh, one person can become unit trust and also a PRS consultant. So there are people who are holding two registrations and therefore they, they are able to sell uh, both unit trust and also PRS. Yeah, but the uh, majority will have only one uh, registration, which is uh, either unit trust or PRS. Okay, how to become a consultant? Okay, to become a consultant, basically, you need to be 21 years old and above. Okay, and you need to have SPM with three credits in any subject. I think all of you will qualify for this requirement and you don't have any uh, uh, adverse record meaning that you don't uh, you know you have not been charged in court and things like that yeah? so if you are interested to become a consultant just approach any of our uh, companies the the unit trust management company or the prs provider and uh, they will be able to assist you to register you for the examination and then after you have passed the examination, you can be registered as a registered consultant with us. Okay, so the fees to take the examination is 170 ringgit 170. That will consist of the examination fee and the, the first year registration. Okay, after you have successfully become a consultant, you can start to sell and uh, market the unit trust or the PRS. Okay, based on your registration. And then uh, on yearly basis, you need to renew your registration for a fee of 50 ringgit, 50. Okay, so uh, that would be uh, the fees for you to become a, a registered consultant with FIM. Okay, uh, I hope uh, I'm clear with our role here. Okay, uh, this is uh, a clip of uh, news. Uh, that appeared, uh, you know, in 2016, okay, about the, uh, one of the misconduct conducted by uh, uh, consultant, uh, financial consultant, basically, uh, not necessarily a unit trust consultant. Uh, this is the staff of a bank who misused the money invested by the client, okay, and uh, has been. Uh, uh, subject to prison for 20 years, okay, and also uh, 24 uh, Okay, so what I want to talk about this is basically, please do not fall into these uh, schemes or traps, okay. Uh, as a young generation, I know you are eager to start your life uh, you want to have a good uh, life, you want to buy a good car, you want to live uh, with a lot of money and things like that, but don't be greedy and fall into this trap. Okay? A lot of people, especially the young and the older one, yeah. retired one, have fallen into this trap because, because of greediness. Okay, you want more money, you invest in the wrong place, and at the end of the day, everything goes down to the. You don't even get 
given a sense. Okay, so please do not invest in illegal scheme, do not invest in a quick risk scheme. Whatever scheme that promise you uh, moon and stars, do not invest in those schemes. Okay, there's no such of uh, you know, you invest 1000 get you get 100,000. Okay. Saya cakap saya. Cik tangan dia. Pilih perunding yang sah. Yang boleh sah, Cik. Tanda tangan je. Jangan tanda tangan borang pelaburan yang tidak lengkap. Saya pengundang yang sah. Ini kad kos saya. Melaburlah secara bijak. Kalau dapat lihat, ya. Ini penyakit cik untuk 38. Di FIMM, kepentingan pelabur, keutamaan kami untuk tim unit amanah dan pesaraan swasta. Okay, remember, only invest with authorized consultant. Do not invest with unauthorized consultant or whoever claims that they are representative of any investment scheme which is not priced in Malaysia, which is not approved uh, in Malaysia by the Securities Commission, by the Bank Negara, or by any of the uh, uh, parties, I mean, the party in Malaysia. So there are a lot of people out there trying to, you know, get your money, make sure full whenever you want to make investment, check the background, make sure that the, uh, the, the consultant is authorized, ask for the authorization card. Okay. So investor, not who, uh, sorry, the, the consultant, uh, uh, these are the common complaints that we receive from uh, investor. Okay, uh, one of it is the pre-sign or pre-company investment form. Okay, and this case is more likely for the investment using the EPF money. Okay, uh, once you have uh, EPF money, basically you can take out the EPF money and to be invested in unit trust. Okay, uh, but of course you cannot use the money. Yeah, uh, but uh, all the money uh, will be invested in the trust fund. And any returns also will be goes back to EPF as well. Yeah, but uh, to facilitate this process, there are uh, forms to be filled, and there are cases whereby consultant will ask you to pre-sign or pre meaning that they will ask you to sign the without putting in any details and all that. So it's a blank form. So don't do that, and make sure if your consultant asks you to do this, this is something uh, wrong. They shouldn't be asking you to resign and pay time. Okay. Uh, uh, consultant who misleading posting uh, on social media, basically on Instagram, on Facebook, you will see consultant will say that, okay, you invest 1,000, you can get 10,000, you can get 20,000. They are not supposed to do that. No guarantee given for any investment. Okay. You must, you must know that any investment is subject to risk. Okay. Either the, the 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 investment will goes up or down. It depends on the market as well. Okay, and then consultant cannot disclose client the personal financial information. Uh, basically, what the consultant do sometimes they will share your personal financial information with their colleague who is an insurance agent, and then the agent will contact you. So you know they are not supposed to do that as well. Okay, uh, they are not supposed to. Promise huge return on investment. Okay, as I mentioned just now, and there are also unauthorized consultants. These are consultants, not actually not consultants because they are not authorized. They have not our examination. They are not registered with us, but they are selling unit trust product. So what happened is that if you invested with them, the money will go to other consultant that they work with. Yeah. So, but this year is because if they run away with your money, we cannot do anything because they are unauthorized consultant. Okay? 
And uh, please, this is a very serious reminder from us. Please do not give any cash money to any consultant, whether authorized or not. You are not supposed to give cash money to your consultant. All investment must be banked in, transfer to the company itself. Okay, because there are cases whereby client give twenty thousand, thirty thousand to the consultant. It is a registered consultant, and the consultant run away with the money. Okay, so please do not give any cash to your consultant, either they are authorized or not. Okay, this is a sample of our authorization card. This is for unit trust uh, uh, consultant and. This or private retirement uh, consultant. And this is when they renew, they will get this uh, slip. Okay, uh, uh, so you also can check whether the consultant uh, is authorized or not by going to our website, okay, and go, is my consultant authorized? You can type the name or you can type the IC number if you have, and then uh, the system website will tell you whether the consultant is authorized or not, whether they are still a valid uh, consultant, they are registered or not. Okay. Puran Cik Shwada selamat ni hari ni. Setuju? Ah, setuju. Ini duit. Tak, tak, tak. Saya tak boleh ambil duit ni. Melabolah secara bijak. Di FIM, kepentingan berlabur, keutamaan kami. Okay. So please help us to help you uh, so that you are not being cheated by the consultant by not giving any cash to the consultant. We have a lot of cases whereby consult, uh, client give cash and then the consultant run away and they come and uh, 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 complains to us. The only uh, advice that they can, we, we can tell them is to make a police report because now it becomes a breach of uh, trust already. Yeah? So, there are cases whereby 100,000 yeah, being, uh, uh, being uh, misused by the consultant. Yeah? So please do not give any cash to your consultant. Laburan Cik Shwada selamat ni hari ni. Setuju? Saya tak nak. Saya tak nak tangan dulu. Nanti kau isikan. Melabolah secara mudah Di FIMM, kepentingan berlabur, keutamaan kami Okay, why you cannot sign on a blank? Simple If you sign a blank form You are as if blank, uh, you signing a blank check Okay, the person can enter any amount Okay, let's say you have agreed to a consultant that you want to invest 10,000 But you sign a blank form and the consultant uh, is looking for a 50,000 investment just to achieve his sales target so that he can go to uh, Istanbul, for example. Because this consultant, normally they work based on a, a, get a sales target. So because of the greediness, it will change your investment from 10,000 to become 50,000. You need his uh, you know, sales target. So these are the things sometimes will happen. So please do not sign any blank form. Make sure that your consultant fill in all the necessary uh, particulars, the name, your address, your amount, to get the, best, the telephone number, then only you sign. Okay. Uh, uh, this is about readiness again, as I said. Yeah? Only a uh, factory operator, you know, uh, lose 17,000 ringgit. And what is 17,000 ringgit for a factory operator? It's a huge money. Yeah? But because he is so greedy to, to you know, make investment and to, to get more money, so he made this investment. Okay, He started with 500 ringgit and get about 980 ringgit. Okay? This is the, the typical apparently of this scheme. They will give you, okay, start to, to deal with you all these things you start with five ringgit they give then you top up one thousand they give you two thousand okay after that, that's it kali tiga 
he put in seven thousand anything. So he uh, any uh, return from this investment, of course not, and he only lose seventeen thousand. And I don't know where he got that seventeen thousand, whether he's saving or he uh you know borrow from his mother, father, and all that, you know, and then all this kind of problem will appear. You, you keep uh, you start to borrow from your friends, your your relatives and things like that, and then your money is gone. How you are you going to pay to them? Your friendship with them going to stop. So you know, it problem. So please do not invest in this kind of thing. If you have any complaints to lodge against any of the consultants or the unit trust company and all that, you can always go to our website. Uh, and or you can email us at complaints at fin.com.my. If you want to know more about the uh, unit trust or PRS or you have any questions with regards to this industry, you also can send to our email address at info, info at fin.com.my. Yeah? So that's all from me. Uh, uh, okay, I promise you to share with uh the uh, secret uh for you to be a full consultant uh, start from now okay nima has mentioned that uh some of the module of the mpc will be integrated in your syllabus and you'll be given the exemption from taking those modules am i uh Nima? yes uh, correct you're right okay so, it's a news all of you because uh, as Nimal mentioned now, you can be a financial planner once you completed all seven modules under the MMC. And by completing all those modules also, you also call it to become a licensed uh, holder under this British Commission. Okay? So if you holding a CMSRL, okay, it's a license under the British Commission, you also can become what we call under our industry is the corporate unit trust advisor or QTA, uh, QTA, corporate unit trust advisor or corporate PRS uh, advisor, CPRA. Okay. And uh, that is our requirement right now. For you to become a corporate unit trust advisor, you need to have a CMRSL. And to get a CMRSL, you need to pass all the uh, MMC and or other uh, financial planning body. Okay. What is the advantage of becoming CUTA or CPRA, eh? uh, unit trust, uh, uh, corporate unit trust advisor? Once you become a uh, corporate unit trust advisor, you can sell unit trust product and PRS to corporate, meaning that you are not selling only to the individual, but you also sell to corporate to organization. For example, if let's say TNB would like to purchase unit trust uh, units, yeah, they are not purchasing one thousand ringgit or two thousand ringgit. They will be purchasing one million, ten million, hundred million ringgit. So imagine the commission that you will get from these sales. So these are what we call the corporate unit trust advisor. Uh, that so they will advise uh, Tenaga National on. Uh, all these things, they will make the financial thing, uh, the financial plan for uh, uh, the TNB. They will provide all the analysis, and once the TNB has purchased through them, you will get the commission. So you will get more money from uh, selling the unit trust to the corporate client rather than the individual. That's one thing. So to do that, you need to become a QTA. So to, to become a QTA, you need a CMRSL and to have CMRSL, you must be a financial planner, uh, approved planner. Okay. Uh, it is not easy to, to get the CMRSL uh, because you need to complete all the seven modules. Okay. Currently, what we have is that, sorry, uh, I'm going to share this scheme whereby we have an apprenticeship program for Futa. Okay. So, if you don't have a CMRSL, you still can join QTA by only completing module one of uh, uh, MFPC module, or this one is under FM. Okay, so you 
need to complete module one, you must be registered uh, MFPC as a RFP, and you can join uh, the QTA as a. Okay, but of course, before that, you must take the examination first and become a consultant. Okay, so once you become consultant, complete module one, you register as affiliate, then you can register with any QTA as apprentice. So you will be given two years yeah, to complete all the seven modules. Only completed one module one, you need to complete another six modules. So once you have completed that, you get your CMRSL. So you have the CMRSL, you will be a full-time tutor already. Okay, you are no more an apprentice. So this is a shortcut way for you to become a tutor. So you can start now. I think most of you is already more than 31 years old. Uh, differently, you will have a three credit in any subject for your SPM. So you can register and take your examination, pass the examination, register, become a consultant, complete your module one and then register as affiliate then you can uh, go to any QTA and uh, become the apprentice okay and uh, by the time you complete your study you graduate you most probably already a full flash QTA by having a CMRSL okay so this is uh, one of the uh, programs that we have in place to help uh, to fast track the the progress to become uh, uh, certified, uh, I mean the CMRSL, the, the certified financial planning. Okay, so uh, that's all from me. Uh, I think it's 12 now, so I'm open the floor for any, any question. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Sharul Nizam. Your sharing was absolutely great. Uh, especially during uh, uh, what are the things that uh, I mean that an individual should do when they're actually planning to invest that is very very important every age uh, category can relate to that and one more most beautiful thing which you have shared today is what are our students from UIA what are their opportunities which they can get from today's program which is by joining the QTA program uh, wonderful sharing, sir. So actually, we have uh, a few questions. Uh, our um, uh, explip director, Miss um, uh, uh, Chukain, has said that uh, it's just a sharing from her. She has said that uh, to be a professional and to have an ethical conduct. And previously, she has said that uh, one second, yeah. Just check on it. Okay. So what she has said that, uh, that um, okay. So what she's telling is financial uh, practitioners need to have uh, need to have this uh, professional and ethical conduct whenever they conduct a program. So she's just sharing with you. Then we have another question which says that. So what is your comment about robot investor like Wahid Invest? And then. Uh, we have another question from Pani Suraya, which says that what falls under unauthorized consultant? Does the consultant that succeed in obtaining the license but fail to renew the license fall under this category? So these are the two questions, sir. Okay, uh, thank you, Dima. So yeah, I agree with uh, Kain. Uh, you know, uh, not only under in this industry, I believe that any industry also you need to be uh, professional, you need to have, uh, you know, you need to be ethical and uh, honesty, integrity must be there. So especially in this industry, when we dealing with money, uh, honesty, integrity, uh, professionalism is the most important thing. And this will keep you in the industry. You know, if you make uh, something, uh, or, or you have uh, performed any misconduct, you know, uh, you make a, for example, I give you a very simple example. As a consultant, you are not supposed to make a negative comments about the industry. If you make a, a, a negative comment in the industry on the public platform, for example, in the Facebook, it is your personal Facebook, but you make a, a, a negative statement about the industry and it has been read by a lot of people. So, you know, what is the, perceptions the, from the people towards you. So actually you are killing your own career. Yeah? So, you know, by you have to be uh, functional and also 
uh, deal with uh, ethics and also honesty and integrity at all times. And uh, to the question of uh, just now, uh, the unauthorized uh, consultants. Okay, unauthorized consultant can be first any individual who have not uh, registered with us as a consultant. So meaning that they have not taken our examination, they have not been registered but they are selling unit charts of PRS products. So these are unauthorized consultants. Uh, in Malaysia, there is a law whereby for you to sell and market unit charts of PRS, you must be registered with him. Okay. So uh, if you are not registered, then you are unauthorized consultant. Or if that individual already a registered consultant, yeah, but last year, end of last year, he did not renew this uh, registration. So this year, he is considered as unauthorized consultant as well because his registration has uh, expired. So until he renewed his uh, registration, then only he can become a authorized consultant. Okay, I hope that that's clear. And uh, I think the next question is on the robo advisor. Okay, robo advisor is a new trend. Uh, it's based on the technology. Okay. Uh, I think Nimal also have started with uh, the, the question on, uh, you know, even though, uh, and I showed a chart just now, what are the professions that have been uh, affected by the technology? And you can see that the profession that provide uh, advisors and also uh, uh, provide the professional services and all that are not really affected by the technology. Why? Because it's, it is the human touch. Okay, there are people who still want to see a human rather than to talk to machine. Yeah, but of course, new generations now they like to do on their own and you know the DIY things and things like that. So we have the robo uh, advisor in place. So even though uh, you have the robo advisor, the work of these financial uh, advisors uh, will be there because there are people who still want to see faces, they don't want to see machines. Yeah. So robot advisor also works on a very limited, uh, uh, we say limited space whereby they only act on based on whatever your input is. If you ask any questions, they will answer based on whatever the uh, database that they have. They cannot go beyond that because it's a machine. Yeah, machine works based on uh, uh, logics, yeah? one, uh, one and zero. So it's either yes or no. Yeah, but human can go beyond that. So when you uh, seek uh, advice from a, a human, from a personal uh, uh, financial planner, they can advise you not only on that scope, but uh, outside of the scope as well, because they are human, they can go beyond that. Yeah? Machine cannot go on beyond on what they been set for. Yeah? So I, I cannot, I, I don't say that robot advisor is not good. Uh, they are good for a group of people who only look for that kind of solutions whereby they only need to know yes or no. But uh, financial planners are better in terms of providing uh, information and answering questions because they can go uh, from questions to questions. Yeah? There's no limit to that. So I hope uh, I answer that, that question. Uh, any other question, Nima? No, sir. Question wise is done. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's all from me. Uh, and uh, again, as uh, my last message, uh, message to all of you, uh, please consider uh, investing in unit trust and uh, PRS as your uh, one of your investment too. Uh, and um, as all of you are still young, I would urge you to start at a young age. Uh, I, I share my experience. I, I was a student, you know, once a time. Uh, you know, 30 years ago, I started to register myself at one of the university. And during the registration week, there is a counter open for one of the unit trust uh, scheme. Okay, and I registered myself because the starting was 10 ringgit. Okay, uh, so I started with that 10 ringgit. After that, I, I just forget about it. I didn't 
uh, make any uh, further investment and all that. After I started to work, okay, uh, and then when I have uh, more money and I want to start to invest, so I remember about that investment. So I go back to that particular fund uh, company and check. Uh, I want to put my investment, ex uh, I mean additional investment. And to my surprise, that 10 ringgit is now already 100 ringgit. So I was telling myself, I'm, I'm so stupid, I didn't make any additional investment after that 10 ringgit. If I were to put, maybe I already have 1,000 ringgit. You know? So don't be like what I you know, experienced. So start young, start small but consistent. Okay? You can start with 10 ringgit. Uh, there are funds who accept 10 ringgit as the, the investment and uh, you can start with that and you will never know that uh, you know after uh, 10 years 20 years the amount can be something that you never imagine yeah? okay so start to invest now but invest smart okay invest in authorized uh, scheme don't fall into the traps don't be greedy Make sure you know the risk. Make sure you know what is your risk appetite. Okay, and uh, stay safe. Selamat hari raya and uh, enjoy your holiday. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sasharun Nizam, and uh, students. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on this uh, wonderful Friday before Hari Raya. Uh, Hari Raya is this Sunday. Actually, I can't believe it. It's just like Pwasa started, just started, and then uh, we are going through PKP and MCO. And uh, so fast, it's already, uh, Hari Raya is already here. So it's like, um, it's totally, uh, I mean, it's totally, yeah, it's totally it's so fast. But yeah, uh, big wishes to all of you all. And uh, before I would like to end today's session, I still wanted to share with you on MFPC's video. I hope you all can see this uh, YouTube channel at the moment so uh i'll just play okay So uh, that would be the MFPC uh, corporate video, which I wanted to show you all. So uh, again, uh, uh, our executive director, uh, 
Ms. Chunkain has also put in a message to all students saying that uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, at today's uh, session. And um, uh, we would like to thank everyone, including um, Sir Sharol and uh, Juan Zurin, especially uh, for actually uh, helping us uh, to conduct and to coordinate this session with all of you all. We are so happy. So, um, really, uh, a big thanks. And also to UIA uh, lecturer, Dr. Fadila, to actually uh, gather all the students for today's workshop and also to students to actually come up for today's uh, program, even though Raya is on a Sunday. But still, you said, OK, knowledge is important. Raya, after this, this session, I'm going to go and prepare um for my raya quay and all the lightings and also good job good work students and again as i've shared please don't forget our mfpc sharing previously as we have said that currently we are taking in an uh, internship for uh the uh, financial uh, services firm please do try out this career email me i've put in uh, i've updated again to everyone on my email address uh, please do email me and again uh, thank you everyone for joining us for this session mr sharon nizam uh, how is how is everything for you is everything good how is raya preparation going on uh yeah thank you uh still preparing lah. uh but of course this this year is going to be different uh but never mind we try to adopt to the new norms that we have so thank you again uh, to MFPC for inviting us as well. And I uh, hope that uh, everybody will enjoy this Hari uh, Raya Thank you so much, everyone. And then uh, the one last final session, usually if we are in a uni or what, we will be taking a selfie. But just for this particular online workshop, can I have everyone to turn on your uh, mute on your mute button and also to actually turn on your video so that we can take a selfie and uh, we can call it a, a good friday a wonderful friday for us to celebrate so just waiting for all of you all to open your mute button and also to unmute your mute button and also to open your video yeah i can see all the students now oh my god awesome students for joining today <laughs> Okay, so just wait a few seconds till everyone uh, open their video and also to mute on their, unmute their.